Hello, and welcome to another time-lapse tutorial. Still not sure if that's exactly what I'm going to be calling it, but this time we are still in 3D Coat and we are focusing entirely on texturing. So we're going to be texturing this asset that you see here, this sort of industrial sci-fi assembly crane system. So here we go. So I'll start a new project. So to bring a model into 3D code that you uh, made in another software for texturing purposes, we're going to go up to File, Import Model for Per Pixel Painting. And I've got it here, Ship Crane Main Arm. I export them as OBJs, I just find that's the least problematic file format to deal with. And then it'll ask you for a few things. Most of these um, I don't touch, except for maybe the normal map software. This is going to Unity. But uh, what I do need to change is down here. First, I'm going to change the UV set name because I'm actually going to be bringing in two objects. But for right now, I'm going to call this one main arm. And then the texture size I'm using for this asset is 2048. So just have to change that. Hit OK. So now I need to bring in a second object. So I'm going to go to File, and instead of Import Model for Per Pixel Painting, what this will do is this will actually create a new 3D coat scene. So we need to do Import Object instead, and this will actually import an additional object into our scene. So then I can go and import the secondary arms. I'll call this secondary arms and a texture file size of 2048. All right, now we have all of them. So the very next thing that I need to do is import the normal maps I had already made for these two objects. So to do that, I will go to Textures, Import, Normal Map. Since we're using two different objects, we need to specify which UV set it's going to. So I'll do the main arm first. And these are normal maps that I made in uh, with Photoshop and Endo. I might do another one of these videos on that. Depends on what I'm working on. So once again, keeping it with Unity, and then I find for the normal map to display properly in 3D Coat with this preset, I need to invert the green channel. Alright, so now you can see we have some normal map details. If I go to normals here in the texture editor, you can see there they are. And then I'll do the same thing for the other object. Okay, now our model, we are ready to start texturing. Let me save this out first. All right, so the very first thing I do whenever I'm texturing in 3D Coat is I bake out curvature and ambient occlusion maps. So I can do that by going to Textures, Calculate Curvature. I usually do that one first. It's important that you do this step after you bring in your normal maps because then the normal map detail will be included in your curvature map. If you don't do that, then any smart materials you use that um, make use of the curvature map won't respect your normal mapped details. Hmm. So it's important to make sure you import the normal maps first and then calculate these uh, or, and then bake these textures out second. So I'll do the curvature first. And you'll see I get this curvature map. Hmm. If I unhide that, you see what it looks like. Uh, 
All right, very good. And then I'll calculate the occlusion, and the occlusion takes a while to do. Okay, the occlusion has been calculated and it is really dark. A little too dark. So first thing I'm going to do is go up to my ambient occlusion layer and I'll just reduce the opacity. Maybe 50%. There we go. So it's still present but not overpowering. Now the next thing that will happen, and this may not be the case with whatever model you're texturing, but it is the case with mine, uh, there are a lot of overlapping UVs in this model, and that's to save on uh, texture space. So as we look down here on the bottom, these, uh, these little rotors right here share the same UVs, and so they share them with, uh, with this object, actually, not that one specifically, but the problem this introduces is that we're getting ambient occlusion from one rotor being applied to the others where it isn't supposed to be. So I'll just, with my ambient occlusion layer on, I will just go in with my eraser. I'm using a transparency of about 50% and I'm using one of the softer uh, alphas. And I'm just gonna go in and get rid of that. There we go. And then if I come across any other problem areas, I'll make sure to address those. But most, for the most part, it's actually looking quite nice. And just to show you real quick, if I hide the normal maps, you'll see in the texture the, uh, the, nor the ambient occlusion layer did actually take into account the normal map. So you get a little bit more detail if you do the normal maps first.